He became very ill. There were four physicians who took care of him. They tended to him day and night. They gave him the treatments of the time, which were mainly like opium and quinine, lots of mercury, all the good stuff. Uh, but nothing helped. And unfortunately, he died five days later. Now, um, what's strange is that we were never really sure what what got him. Uh, it was recorded at the time that it was cholera, but a lot of diarrhea was blamed on cholera then. So later on, people started thinking it probably wasn't. It probably wasn't cholera. So then there was thought like, well, maybe it was typhoid, since now we know there was this White House swamp and there was probably typhoid everywhere. Maybe you got typhoid. Except one historian in the 1990s, Clara Rising, thought, you know what? Maybe he was poisoned. Now, why did she think this? <laughs> Because Taylor adamantly opposed slavery, despite the fact, as I found out, he was a slave owner. He did oppose slavery, and he was fighting to ensure that all the new states that were being added out west would not allow slavery, or slavery in, in those states. And so there were a lot of people in the South who wanted him dead. Uh, and the president that followed him after he died, Miller Fillmore, was fine with allowing slavery everywhere. So there was this thought, like, ooh, maybe he was assassinated by someone from the South. So Rising was so convinced of this that she decided she wanted to prove it by exhuming his body. Because she tried to get a hair sample first, but there was no hair sample. She wanted to prove that there was poison there. Uh, and she couldn't find any. So she wanted to exhume his body, and the only way she could do that was if she found a family member and got their permission. So she starts calling everybody with the last name Taylor. This is what she did. Uh, eventually... She found a guy who was a descendant of the president. His name was John McElhenney. McElhenney. He was 84 years old, and he was the great-great-great-grandson of Taylor. He's also, by the way, re related to the guy who invented Tabasco sauce. Just, uh, all right. So, I know. so so all this huge case, like she tracks on this guy, he gives permission, then she has to get permission from the Jefferson County, Kentucky coroner and the Department of Veterans Affairs, and she goes through all these hoops and they exhume the body and they study the hair looking for arsenic, and there's not any because he died of typhoid. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a crazy story. Wow, man. That's not how I thought it was going to end. But, to be fair, I probably would have heard about it before now if it had been like that. You'd think that'd be the first thing you'd find like when you Google him, like, poisoned. Um, it, it, if there is an afterlife and Taylor is watching from heaven, I hate that he had to go through that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what are they... I doubt he Oh, no, it. come on! <laughs> oh, it was just time for, Come on! It was the cherries! It was cherries. Poor guy. Hey, we hate to break into the show here, but wanted to take just a quick moment to tell you about Trunk Club. Now, if you're like me, you like looking nice in clothes. Uh, and like a lot of fellas, I'd imagine, um, or, or like a lot of people, frankly. I was but gonna say, and some ladies, too. And pretty much a lot of people, you don't really know uh, where to start. You want to look good, but you don't know um, how, how to do it. Uh, and Trunk Club is the service for you. Uh, here's what you do. You're going to call Trunk Club up. And you're going to just talk to your own personal stylist. You're going to tell them uh, what kind of events, what kind of things you're looking for clothes for. What do you wear clothes to? Hopefully all public functions, because that is the law of the land. Uh, but we're not here to Most judge. Most places. Most places. Everywhere. There's some chill places yeah. out there. Yeah. And they're going to listen to uh, your sort of fashion preferences and get your measurements and what have you. They're going to send you a box full of really cool clothes. They're going to look great on you and that you will love. Now, here's the cool thing. You uh, try on the clothes, do a little fashion show for your significant other, your kids, or your cats, and then you're going to keep the ones that you like, send back the ones that uh, that don't work for you. You are going to look fantastic. This isn't a subscription service. Shipping's always free, and you got 10 days to try on the clothes risk-free. You only keep the stuff you like. If you don't like any of it, send it all back. The Trunk Club doesn't care. They want you to look great. Now, here's the deal. You're going to go to trunkclub.com slash sawbones to check this out. That's trunkclub.com slash sawbones. That address one more time, Sydney Smurl McElroy. That's trunkclub.com slash sawbones. Sid, who else do we have sponsoring the show this week? Our other sponsor this week is Blue Apron. 
Uh, now, let me tell you, if you haven't tried Blue Apron by now, you really should. Don't send me I have. Well, I wasn't talking to you, Justin. Okay, fair enough. I was enough. talking to everyone who is so unlucky that they haven't yet. Blue Apron is a wonderful service that will send a box of delicious, perfectly proportioned ingredients for some wonderful meals straight to your home so that you can cook something great that maybe you've never tried before that tastes good and you have exactly what you need in your own home. If you know how science works, you know that calories are units of energy that are then converted uh, into energy that we use to fuel the actions that we take every day. The show that you're hearing right this moment is fueled by Blue Apron. Quite literally, we are now burning the cacals that we uh, deliciously ingested courtesy of a... Uh, a, a chicken piccata oh, yeah. with a fusilli pasta. Oh, yeah, it was so good. And we made it, it's fun, and we love it. And uh, uh, our baby even liked the pasta, so that's a... Uh, a high bar, as anyone with toddlers will tell you. And, and Blue Apron sends you the highest quality ingredients. Uh, they have uh, very high standards for their community of suppliers, family-run farms, fisheries ranchers. So uh, whether it's Japanese ramen noodles or wild-caught Alaskan salmon, everything they bring you is the best. Uh, so you, you want to try Blue Apron. Trust us on this one. Check out this week's menu and get your two meals for free with free shipping. By going to blueapron.com slash sawbones. That's blueapron.com slash sawbones. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. All right, without further ado, to back to the show. The, the last president I want to talk to you about was James Garfield. He was our 20th president in 1881. Like, that was the only year he was president. You'll find out why. Um, and I know what you're thinking. Now, wasn't he shot? We know what killed him. Right? That's not a disease. But no, we, we know that one. <laughs> the lady poisoning doesn't count. <laughs> but, but there's more to it. Okay. And, and let me say this. I found out a lot about James Garfield. He was kind of a cool dude. He was really smart. He was like a self-made man. Um, he could write in Greek with one hand and Latin with the other. Like, at the same time. I don't know what utility you have in that. <laughs> I have to get two pressing messages out right now. <laughs> you know what he's going to do when he's drunk at a party every time? Like, watch this. <laughs> cool, right, cool, ladies? Right. I wrote fart <laughs> in both of them. <laughs> so... He became president, and, and like I said, he was a really smart, smart dude. He may have done a lot of great things. Unfortunately, we won't know, because this was the era of the spoils system, which meant that anybody who wanted a position in government, all you had to do was just go ask for it. Like, you could get an interview with the president and demand, no matter what your qualifications or experience or anything. So, like, he would spend lots of time, all the presidents did, interviewing people for government positions. One of the people he interviewed was a man named Charles Guiteau. And he was a kind of a loser, really. Uh, he had tried a lot of different things. Uh, he tried to be a lawyer for a while. He tried to be an evangelical preacher. Uh, he started a free love commune for a while. Um, but even that didn't work. They actually kicked him out of his own commune. Uh, I tried him, to make that love a little too free. <laughs> they started calling him Charles Get Out, which isn't like the most clever <laughs> play. But anyway. So he showed up at the White House and he demanded a job as minister to France. And they said no, because you don't have any experience doing anything. So at this point, he decides that he's receiving messages from God that he needs to kill the president because he didn't make him minister to France. So that's what he decides to do. He shines his shoes and he gets a gun and he goes to a train station where he knows Garfield's going to be and he shot him. Now, the thing about it is that the, the, where the bullet went in actually probably if you got to get shot wasn't that bad of a place the wound itself was not fatal what happened after this is that because the bullet went in about 3.5 inches and it lodged kind of below his pancreas but just in the middle of kind of a, a lot of nothing a lot of not important stuff i mean everything's kind of important but like not the most important stuff that you need it's okay the bullet's okay but all the physicians around him were like we're gonna save the president so all, they all rush the scene, and there are all these doctors who show up, and they're all digging in this wound with their dirty fingers, trying to get this bullet back out to save the poor guy's life. Uh, Lincoln wants to help, and so he calls in 
Dr. D. Willard Bliss. Now, Justin, I have a note right here that I need you to read out loud. Dr. D. Willard Bliss. Ask me what the D stands for, Justin. <laughs> okay. What does the D stand for? It stands for doctor. <laughs> That's good. I'll give you that one, Smurl. Yeah, That's good. Mom named him Doctor. <laughs> I mean, called Shaw right there, right? <laughs> and it was it's like, it, as you would imagine, if you're named Doc, like he was, he was arrogant and he was reckless and he was a man who knew. Like, well, you can't fire me. <laughs> no, I'm Doctor. I'll you still be Doctor. Away. I'm still Doctor. <laughs> He had no regard for antiseptic technique. Not many people did at the time. Um, and he refused to believe also that he kind of looked at him and said, I know where this bullet is. And it is definitely um, on the right side of your body and not the left. So we're going to keep probing towards the right side of your body and try to find this bullet. So he kept searching for the bullet. Uh, in the meantime, he was giving him like quinine, a lot of morphine, lots of brandy. How was it a debate? Some mercury. <laughs> Uh, he actually at one point called in Alexander Graham Bell, who had invented this this thing. Hi, was, can you call a better doctor, please? <laughs> it was called an induction balance device, and it was basically a metal detector. And he called him in to use this new, brand new, what we would think of now as a metal detector, to just search the right side of his body for the bullet. He wouldn't even let him look on the left. He was so certain that it was on the right. Well, obviously, he didn't find the bullet, and they kept digging, and all in all about a dozen or so doctors at some point had their finger inside this poor man. Um, oh. yeah, you can imagine after, over time, the wound was like 20 inches long. It was, it was quite infected. It was pouring pus. Um, he got very sick and 80 days later he died. Unfortunately. Now, what How long? 80 days. That's a cool 80 days, huh? <laughs> That's a cool, that's a cool nearly three months to have for your last of them. Mm, good. That's definitely how I want to spend them. Me too. I get Phineas Fogg was like, hey, you want to come chill in a balloon? And then I was like, no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line a table and let doctors just like get up in there. <laughs> so I'm dead. Okay. At least, I mean, they did give him a lot of brandy. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> After he died, his murderer, Charles Gateau, went on trial, of course, for it. They knew he was the one who shot him. And he actually, he pled guilty to shooting him. He admitted he did. But he pled not guilty to murdering him. And what he said was, listen, I just shot him. His doctors killed him. Fair, right? Fair defense? Which, while true, did not hold up. He was nah, not guilty. Nah. I was just trying to spook the guy. I don't know what happened. <laughs> just trying to put a scare into him. Um, wow. So you guys, you guys don't come out great in this one, huh? No. You guys don't come no, out we, too no. great. We rarely do at this point in history. Yeah, it's not a hot time for you all. No, I mean, that's what every one of these, as you read them, it's like, what did we do? We gave him, you know, like some opium and some mercury and some quinine, and then he died. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll do it again next time and see what happens. Uh, hey, everybody, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for having us. This is great. Uh, we're going to take a 15-minute intermission. And then we'll be uh, right back with my brother, my brother, me. But until then, my name is Justin McElroy. Sydney McElroy. And as always, don't drill a hole in your head. <laughs> MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Thinking Sideways is not brought to you by Crawfish Boxing. Instead, it's supported by the generous contributions of people like you, our listeners, on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash thinking sideways to learn more. Thinking Sideways. The story is a thing we simply don't know the answer to.
Well, hey there, and welcome again to another episode of Thinking Sideways. As always, I'm Steve, joined, of course, by... Devin. And Joe. And once again, we've got a mystery. What? Yeah. Yeah. We do. This is a pretty scary one, too. It, well, no, it isn't. But, yeah. you know, the thing is, I had so much fun last week, or not last week, last time that I hosted doing a wrestling episode that, seems that like I been, decided we'd do another one. Seems like it's been a million years since that we did that episode. It really does. Yeah. Cause in our wor- really does. Yeah. Cause in our world, it's been a month. At least, uh, at least, yeah. Yeah, three weeks. Okay, well, we're not actually going to do a wrestling story. Well, a little bit. But kind of. It's kind of, kind of a wrestling story. Yeah. We are this week, for anyone who, as Devin would say, didn't read the episode title, going to be talking about Mr. Andy Kaufman. Yeah. And you might say, well, why? Well, the mystery is, is Andy Kaufman really dead or not? Because he's one of those people who has had sightings of him for years. Mm-hmm. He's a new Elvis. I like Andy a little more than I like Elvis at times. Oh, so yeah. I'm okay with that. I'm going to get so much hate mail for saying that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so let me give everybody just the quick, real brief version, and then we'll get into some details. So a brief introduction to Andy.